Don's party and, and, uh, and the club, which is a few years later, but again, these are based on the David Williamson plays. Yeah. What was it like doing a play, which some, those two films, which are very, you know, because they're coming from stage, yeah. a yeah. lot of it is people talking in rooms. How do you um, approach that kind of thing? I mean, the, the um, uh, Don's party, of course, was uh, potentially claustrophobic because it was all shot in this little bungalow, which mm. was actually a location. Um, all shot at night because we couldn't afford to black it out in a reasonable way. And um, it, it um, so, but I, I think uh, Bruce and I had probably learn enough by then to try to make it breathe a bit with the swimming pool scenes and the neighbours, uh, yeah, take it outside. Well, the club use as many of the rooms as we could and just keep it moving. Hmm. Um, it, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was all, you had the script, we talked about the scene, we set it up, rehearsed it, we shot it and, the, you know, it, it was, there was, a, there was some broader thinking, but most of the thinking was uh, on the day. <laughs> so is that the kind of thing, let, let's just shoot this, let the actors do their thing, whereas in other films um, we, we can afford to be, have the vistas and be able more elegant, f- focus more on cinematography for this rather all, than just all, shoot the performance. All, all those films, and, and it shows in the films, uh, uh, were rushed. I mean, you had no time. Um, the, the thing was basically to, I mean, f- to record the dialogue as well as you could mm. with the, the money you got. You know, if, you, if you're getting to take three, things were getting a bit desperate. <laughs> that pressure was, um, cer- certainly those films would have been a little more interesting if, if we'd all had a bit more time. Mm. Um, maybe we'd but got to the stage of being boring, but who knows? <laughs> then one can argue that the dynamic quality of it yeah, you, comes the, out of that experience. It, 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 yeah. They, they work, that's the main thing. Well, one of the ones where um, is not so much room bound is Getting of Wisdom. Well, that, that's, that's one of my, still my, one of my favourite films. It's the first time I had a chance to shoot, um, oh, something a little deeper than mm. uh, a football comedy or, uh, you know, political, uh, uh, political comedy. comedy yeah. or, uh, it, it, um, and of course, you had beautiful young women uh, and quite beautiful locations mm. to work in. And it, it, it was, it, it was a, a wonderful uh, opportunity. So and I, that I learning, enjoyed that immensely. Was that a learning experience getting out and doing those kind of location shoots? Because you hadn't really done that much until this point. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm right in the middle of my film school. There's no two mm. ways oh, about so it. So you're still learning the craft? Oh, you, I'm, you, look, you, I'm, I'm, st- I'm still learning. I mean, I, I go to the odd film school and ask, what film school did you go to, Mr. McAlpine? I, I said, well, I've just left one. I've, <laughs> I, I've just finished a $150 million lesson. And, uh, you know, it's true. Uh, it's true. I mean, every, every film I work on, I'm learning. Uh, you have to. Uh, it's a, both evolving and you have to evolve. And, and, and also, I think, You've got to evolve um, as a person, disregarding all the evolving te- technology around you. Yeah. Well, th- let's talk a bit about the technology. Here you're shooting film, of course. Um, is there much thought going into which camera, which stock, film stock you're going to be using for each film? Um, I've always regarded the equipment as as there, uh, I, I would shoot on the most appropriate Kodak stock because it, it was the best and it was the one, the only one the studios, American studios would use at that mm. time. And, uh, and I, I've used Panavision equipment ever since then and, and then I forget about it. I, I actually take- So you know the tools I, you work I, with. I, I, I just take almost zero interest. I have a, make sure I have a very good f- first camera assistant who will know infinitely more about the equipment than I'll ever know. Mm. And um, he, he both selects the equipment and maintains it and, and basically uh, tells me of all the latest and greatest and, and what I should have and what I shouldn't have. I mean, they're, they're, he, he, 
he takes over, in my films, he takes over all that area. Right. So your focus is what's happening well, in front I, of the I, I, don't, I don't give a damn about the film or the camera. I mean, except for what it can do for me. Yeah. The, the actual glory of having one there is not there. And as long me. as they're Kodak and yeah, a Panasonic yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, or Panavision, you're going to be good. Um, Patrick, again, here's a very different kind of film. We're talking genre horror now. Yeah. And, a very, and Richard Franklin, another a different director. Very now, different. Because you've done a lot with Bruce Beresford up to this point. Yep, yep. No. Um, yeah, R Richard was quite interesting. He was, uh, it, I remember he was obsessed with Orson Welles and, um, and I said, eventually I started looking at a few films uh, from Orson and, and I, I, I got him to realise just exactly that Orson Welles was brilliant in Orson Welles' time. Mm. If he made a movie like that today, he'd be laughed out of the <laughs> regiment. So. Uh, so we, yeah, we, it, 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 it was fun doing that, uh, having somebody in a lift with a, being lit by a little, the first of the LED watches, which was a little red dim. And that's how you lit the scene. <laughs> that, that was supposedly that, but the audience thought. Right. Uh, I mean, those, those sort of things were, were fun. But um, yeah, it was, was, was a good, a good yarn. But again, uh, there, these are, this is the time when those sort of films are being made really fast. Yeah, well, very they knock fast. them out quickly. Yeah, uh, I mean, s s uh, this was somewhere around the. They went from four weeks to six weeks, and then then we got to the luxury of eight weeks <laughs> towards the end of my Australian stint. Um, uh, eight weeks is is marginal still. I mean, it, it you just haven't got the time to put in the excellence yeah. that's, that's really needed to make it look. Uh, I mean, I, am, I admire the television people today that the, the quality of product they're putting out under the pre, uh, time pressures yeah. that, that, are, that are amazing. And we're talking relatively simple films. There's no major visual effects or anything going on. No. 